Father, bless us now as we preach. Power and authority, anoint me, Lord, to tell the truth. Give us to make the right decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody shout, two gates. two gates. Let me give you the context here of verse 13 and 14. The context is about and uh, I want you to really listen to me, decisions that believers make after their decision to come to Christ. I'm not sure what Jesus is saying. Brother sorry, this is about decisions. Not that sinners make. This is not the decision of whether or not to become a Christian. This is about the decision that believers make after their decision to come to Christ. Becoming a believer is the most crucial decision, but it is not the final decision. A believer is to, after he's made this most crucial decision, one must keep making decisions that are consistent with that crucial decision. After you've made a decision to serve the law, which is the most crucial, then every decision that you make after that crucial decision should support that crucial decision and should be consistent with that crucial decision. Following conversion, we must decide whether we will live lives of magnanimity or lives of mediocrity. The question is, which gate will we enter? And what path will we walk? I want you to let that sink in. That throwing you off a little bit right now because when I read the text, some of you said to yourselves, well, I'm all right because I've already chose Jesus, so that means I'm already on the, in the street gate. Well, let's let's... Talk about it. Because in the Sermon on the Mount, which is the context, he's preaching to his, the believers. He's giving them the word of the Lord. Let me say this, and we'll, we'll, we'll visit this closer. Christians have always been accused of being narrow-minded or closed-minded people. You know, we spent some time on this this past Thursday night. We're talking, we're talking about absolute truth. Absolute truth is that which is always true for all people at all times and is never compatible with any opposing system. Always true all the time for all people in every place and never consistent with any opposing system. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus was not claiming to be the truth, the way, the truth, and the life for Christians. Jesus is not the way, the truth, and the life for Christians. Jesus is the way the truth, and the life for everybody. Always true in every place for all people at all times. Jesus said, no man. He didn't say no Christian. He said, no man. 
coming to the Father, but not by me. He claimed to be the only Savior. That's absolute truth. That's true in an Indonesian country. This is true in a Muslim country. It's true in a communist country. It's true in a socialist country. It's true. It's true for the atheist. It's true for the agnostic. It's true for the deist. It's true for the Buddhist. No man. No man. That is inclusive of all. Come up to the Father. But by me. To have this view. Many times you're, you're accused. I've been accused of being it so much till I wear it as a badge of honor. As being closed minded. And uh, we talked the Thursday night how. One of the most closed minded positions uh, that there is, is the belief that you should always be open-minded. Because that suggests that there is nothing that one should be closed-minded about. There are some things you ought to be closed-minded on. That's a red dress that Mother Christian is wearing this morning. And it's a beautiful one at that. I'm not open for discussing that uh, with anybody that that dress is blue. I'm not open with that. Mm-mm. That's, that's red. Got silver stones, but that's a red outfit. Say amen. We're at the upper room, Church of God in Christ. I'm not open for anybody who would debate this and say, well, this is Disney World. I'm not open to that. But isn't that a possibility that may? No. I think that we should be closed-minded on issues. That we should have a closed mind on issues of absolute truth. I'm not open to the belief that a man through surgery can make himself into a woman. He can, through surgery, make himself a feminized man. And she can, through surgery, make herself a masculinized man. Woman, but she cannot through surgery make herself into a man. He cannot through surgery make himself into a woman. I'm not open to that. I'm closed. My mind is closed to that. We're accused of being closed minded. A friend of mine once told me of a person who moved to Raleigh from the left coast. That person said this about me. I can't join that church because that pastor is too narrow-minded. The person went on and joined another church of God in Christ in the area. I consider the, what they said about me a compliment. A famous singer once praised one of America's most famous preachers by saying this, the, fam the singer was Shaka Khan, and the preacher she praised was T.D. Jake. She says, I like the way he preaches because he's not like other preachers who only preach from the Bible. The late, great G.E. Patterson was criticized because, and the person said this to me, this was said to me about the late, great G.E. Patterson. He was criticized, and the, the criticism that was waged against him, it didn't make me angry, but it made me jealous. You know what the criticism was? He was criticized. He says, G.E. only preaches preach from the Bible. That's what the critic said about the preacher. I said, oh God, let him say that about me. Oh God, someday. Uh, to my knowledge, the closest I've come to it thus far, I was in a, on a radio in a debate, on a radio show, and I was debating a um, rabbi 
a imam and a preacher. And the reverend was a lesbian. And she said, the problem with Dr. Wooden is that he defined human sexuality only through the scriptures. He, he has a narrow view of human sexuality. And I said to her, thank you. The point is, to be perfectly honest, some of those criticisms about the believer being narrow-minded or closed-minded, the truth is, there's truth to those criticisms. Amen. The truth is that there is a narrow gate to anything in life worthwhile. If you're going to accomplish something, you too are going to have to walk through a narrow gate. Amen. If you want to even, just for example, if you want to be a great musician, you've got to go through a narrow gate. Our own minister of music, Elder Clarence Rayford, been the minister of music here for over 26, 27 years. He's raised four wonderful children. He's put them all through college. He and his lovely wife own their own home. They do quite well. I called him while preparing for this message. And I asked him, I said, uh, to be able to play the way you play. He's an excellent musician. I said, uh, amen. He just, amen. I asked him, and I explained to him the message. I said, how hard did, it, did you have to work? Did you have to go through a narrow gate or be somewhat closed-minded or focused, driven to be able to play the way that you play. And he told me, he said, more than, on more than one occasion, Pastor, I've fallen asleep on the organ while learning how to play. He said, in fact, one morning his mom got up and saw him on the organ asleep. And she thought that he had died. She was happy when she touched him or called him and he responded. But he played until he collapsed. Multiple times he has practiced all night long and still put time in today to stay current to master the basics to be able to play any song in any key. And he has to be able to do that to play for me because I don't know what key I may do. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that. And that's why I thank God for the praise team. We selected these particular persons because they're good at, they're adaptable. They, they're good at being able to play in any key because we can practice in one key and I may come out in a whole new one. And they know they can't be standing there looking at each other going, this ain't the way we practiced it. <laughs> And they do a great job. And I, I, I thank you for your hard work. Because in that group, people you can't have someone stand there mouthing, this ain't the way we practice. Mm -mm. Yeah. Bishop G.E. Patterson's organist. A tremendous man of God said that his practice regimen, I'm talking about Narragate, said he practiced 10 hours per day, 
every day. That was his regimen. One day, a famous singer, the late Aretha Franklin, came to Memphis to do a concert. In those days, she was traveling with a 100-piece orchestra. The venue where she was was too small for her orchestra. She needed the strings. They contacted this man of God on a day's notice. One man replaced a hundred pieces, a full hundred piece orchestra on a day's notice. And the funny thing was they practiced about 10 songs on a day's notice and the night of the show the singer came out and performed 12 totally different songs. And he had to play the whole routine perfectly. Great discipline, hard work, self-denial, and long hours. That is the narrow gate is required to accomplish anything worthwhile. There's much resistance in people, even here, to the whole idea of a narrow gate. And there's even much more resistance to the idea that there are, according to God's truth, only two gates or two paths. That is after you become a believer. See, most people don't succeed because most people don't have the work ethic. Won't put the time in. The class is too hard. The class is too hard. That means it's too hard because uh, it interferes with my playtime. You buckle down, you can get it. But you got to be willing. Amen. I'm going to go a little bit further. Not only are there only two gates or two paths, but the text speaks of gates and way. The road that you walk through to go into the gates. But according to the word of God and in the eyes of the Lord, at the end of the day, according to God's truth, there are only two kinds of people. And the two kinds of people aren't, sorry, you financial analysts and smart guys with all of the worldly wit and maxims. You know, I know what you would say. There's winners and losers. and You love to call yourself a winner, and everyone else is a loser. But... According to the God of the Bible, the two groups of people are sheep and goats. Two gates, two people. Two kinds of people. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25 and verse 31. I'm going to preach to you in just a minute. Says... When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and behold, he shall gather, look at this, all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on the right hand but the goats on his left notice he didn't say he's going to set the rich on one hand and the poor on the other he didn't say I'm going to set the males on one hand and the female on the other 
He didn't say the Republicans on one hand. Democrats on the other. Whites on one hand. Blacks on the other. He didn't, he didn't even say Jews on one hand. And Gentiles on the other. But the sheep on one hand. And the goats on the other. And he's going to tell the sheep to enter into the joys of the Lord. The goats are going to hell and they're going to burn forever. You're going to say to the goats, depart from me, verse 41. You cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, it's time to get right. We spend time trying to be all of these things. But the separation won't be the separation of the haves and the have-nots, but the sheep from the goat. Preach, wouldn't you? There are several things I would like to say that I want to point out, and then we're going to be done. First of all, the text speaks, verse 13, of a gate. The gate is a large door or an entrance of an edifice or a city. Just view in your mind two huge doors into a city. The Greek word there for gates in our text is pule, which means a large door, and not thua, which means a common door. So he's speaking of, and the people to whom Jesus was speaking fully understood what he was saying when he spoke of the gate. Now listen to me now. He says there is a straight gate. Straight gate. Straight gate. Straight. But not straight. Everybody says straight. straight. But not straight. Notice our text speaks of the straight gate. S-T-R-A-I-T. That is straight like this. Narrow. Narrow. Not straight. But straight. Narrow. Paul said in Philippians 1 and 23, I am in a straight. I'm, I'm hemmed in. I have one or two choices. I'm, I don't have a lot of room for play. I'm in a straight. For Samuel chapter 13 and verse 6 says, spoke of the men of Israel, says, when they saw that they were in a straight. That is, they were in an area where it did not allow them much Latitude. Everybody say straight. straight. Narrow. See, see. Amen. Straight. Not straight. Praise the Lord. In um, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8, it gives us uh, the definition of the S. T R A I G H T, straight. Ecclesiastes 7 and 13 says, Who can make straight that which God have made crooked? And then Matthew speaks of the ministry of John the Baptist in Matthew 3 and 3, where John said, Make the path, make his path straight. That was the work of John the Baptist, to make the path of Jesus straight. Straight, as in without curves, having no curvature, not crooked, praise the Lord, but uh, bent, not crooked, not bent, straight. But on the other hand, this straight that Jesus was speaking of was narrow. I want it to sink in. A narrow passage. It literally means, follow me now, 
restricted, constricted, tight, confined, depressing, and difficult. I'm getting ready to swing. Cousin, I'm winding up a bolo punch. Jesus said that we must enter into the restricted gate. Remember, I'm laying a foundation. I said these are decisions, the decisions you make after. After you get saved. Getting saved is the most crucial, but it's not the only. After you get saved, there are two gates. That you can take. Good God Almighty. Two ways. Two kind of Christians. That you can be. Jesus said in a. The restricted. Constricted. Tight. Confined. Sometimes depressing. Sometimes difficult. Gate. It may be bent because it's not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. It may be bent. It may be curved. It may be crooked. It may be wavy. It may have twists and turns, but no matter how it bends, no matter how it curves, it's still straight. That is, no matter what situation you're going through, the Lord still expects. He still expects the believer, even if he's in a, a, a turn in life, to still stay in the straight and narrow. You don't, you, go, you don't get excused because your mama died to all of a sudden get broad. You don't get excused because you, your new friends allow you new latitude. You got new freedoms. Jesus said, I feel like preaching. Enter in at the straight gate. Now you, you begin to see where I'm headed. And now you begin to see why so many people reject biblical Christianity. So many of these people come after preachers like us sometimes implied, sometimes direct, sometimes we're thrown off on. We're implied that it's uh, religious traditions called the spirit of tradition. Oh, over there at so-and-so's church, they're hard over there. They're tight over there. You can't do anything over there. I feel like preaching. In that church. But Jesus said, enter into the straight gate. Can I preach? Uh, our text does not begin with a suggestion. You liberal Christians out there, you who boast in your freedoms. The text begins with a command. You've been to school. You've been to school. Look at verse 13. It's a command. Enter. In fact, it's expressing action. It's the auroris imperative tense. Enter. It demand, demands a definite and specific action. Jesus did not say admire the gate. He did not say ponder the gate, but enter, enter it. Many people admire the principles of the Sermon on the Mount, but never follow those principles. Many people respect and praise Jesus Christ, but never receive him as Lord because they never receive the king 
and never enter into the kingdom, they are as much separated from the king as any pagan or rank atheist is. You're just like an unethical pagan. God didn't call us to just admire the gate. We're not called to just appreciate the gate. We are called to enter the gate. Notice it says, enter ye, O English, you. The thing is both collective and personal, singular and plural. Jesus is talking to me. Jesus is talking to us. Jesus is talking to you. Jesus is saying, enter the straight gate. How you receive this depends on what kind of soil you are. I've been telling you all that the parable of the soil is not about the seed. The seed doesn't change. The parable of the soil is about the soil. Not the seed. The seed fell by the wayside. That's a certain kind of person. The seed fell on stony ground. That's a certain kind of person. Seed fell among thorns. That's a certain kind of person. Then the seed fell on good ground. That's a certain kind of person. Oh, I see you. What kind of person are you? The term, the, that determines how you hear the word of the Lord. It's, it has no, uh, it doesn't say anything about the word itself. It says nothing about the validity of the preacher or the truth of the gospel, but it speaks to the heart of the individual. We are called to enter into the straight gate. The person who enters to the narrow gate must enter alone. You don't get saved on the marriage plan. Husband and wife come to Christ. Y'all, y'all might have stood there, stood there at the same time, but you can't get you can't get saved holding hands. You can't get saved hugged up. No, she got to lift her hands, and he's got to lift his. And each individual that if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's on the individual plane. When you enter into the gate, you enter the gate alone. We bring nothing else. Praise the Lord. We bring no one or nothing else. Some commentators suggest that the gate is pretty much like a turnstile. You know, when you're getting on the subway or going into, praise the Lord, the auditorium. The turnstile allows one person in at a time. You and your child can't get through the turnstile. You and your husband, you and your mama can't get through the turnstile. One person at a time. Amen. No baggage through the turnstile. People do not come in to the kingdom in groups, but singly. The Jews had, mistake, had the mistaken notion, they thought, that they were God's people simply by race only to find, and by circumcision. And they were, but in terms of salvation, you got to enter into the straight gate. Furthermore, God's gate is so narrow. Uh, I feel like I'm in a dead church. So narrow that we got to go through it naked. The gate don't allow uh, you to go enter into it with all of your junk, your personalities, your issues, and all you want. It is a gate of self-denial through which one cannot carry the baggage of sin and self-will. Praise the Lord. When we sing, 
Nothing in my hands I bring, but simply to the cross I cling. We are testifying to the way of the gospel, the way of Christ, the way of the cross. It is the way of self-denial. Jesus said, if any man come after me, what is, what is all this stuff about? I found myself, and I know who I am. And all. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, not find himself, but deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. When you come to Jesus, see the, the narrow gate, you all not saying amen. The narrow gate makes you unload. You can't be who you want to be, depending upon who you want to be. Can't be that and enter into the narrow gate. Straight gate. Everybody say straight gate. Jesus commands, Jesus' command is not simply uh, to enter some gate, but to enter the narrow gate. Let me say this to you. Every person enters one gate or the other. That is unavoidable. Everybody. Everybody enters one gate or the other. You're on one road or the other. Right while you're sitting there looking at me. Praise the Lord. You, you cannot. Well, I just, I, I decide that I'm just not going to receive that. You don't have a choice. Everybody enters one gate or the other. Jesus pleads for men. The purpose of the gospel is after you get saved, make sure after you get saved, you enter into the right gate. See, because even after you get saved, if you get on the wrong road, it's going to lead you to the wrong place. Uh, Jesus said, get on the right gate, God's gate, the only gate that leads to life, the only gate that leads to heaven. Jesus has repeatedly shown the narrowness of God's internal standards of righteousness in contrast to the broadness of the external standards of Judaism. Praise the Lord of the Jewish traditions. They had their own man-made traditions. The path to that narrow way of kingdom living is through the narrow gate of the king himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. This is the first of the two gates. I'm almost done. Bring me up just a little bit. Uh, that our Lord mentions. We are to walk in it. Live in the, the right kind of life. And, and that is not optional. But it is a command. Do you see it? We're commanded by the Lord. To enter the straight gate. But we do have a choice. We have free will. The choice is the straight or the wide. There's no third choice. There's no choice to say I won't be on either gate or any, either road. Then he mentions the second gate. He said in verse 13 to B clause, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. That is wide and broad is that path. Uh, wide, praise the Lord, is the other gate. Jesus says, I got a straight gate, and there's a wide gate. And he says, everyone will enter one of these gates. Everyone is actively walking one of these paths. There's only two. These are the only two ways that men can travel. Wide, that is, broad street. The wide gate, one writer said, is easy. It's attractive. It is inclusive. It is indulgent. It's permissive. Self 
oriented. Mm -hmm. The way of the world. It has few rules, few restrictions, and few requirements. That's the wide gate. A lot of churches represent the wide gate. You can be anything you want to be. All you got to do is name the name of Christ. After that, there is nothing else you got to do. Praise the Lord. Or at least be religious. And then you're all right. MacArthur said in these churches, sin is tolerated. Truth is moderated. Humility is ignored. God's word is praised, but not studied. The standards are admired, but not followed. This wide, broad way requires no maturity. No moral character, no commitment, and no sacrifice. No wonder people are so drawn to the wide gate. It's easy believism. It's Christianity without teeth. It is religion without change. It is holiness without being holy. Praise the Lord. It is church without the life-changing substance thereof. The Bible says, speaks of men who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. That's the wide gate. It's false Christianity. And brother born, it is no better than being lost because you are lost when you let the devil fool you into getting on this broad road. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm free. You're free to, to do whatever you want. You're free to be an adulterer. You're free to be a fornicator. You're free to be a homosexual. Free to be effeminate. Free to do whatever you want. Free, praise the Lord, to act any way you want. And in the name of Jesus, that's the wide gate. But that ain't the gate that Jesus said enter. Jesus said that's another gate. Aha, uh -huh. it is, it is, it's more restrictive. It'll put you in a straight. But I want you to know that these two gates have different destinations. That wide gate leadeth to destruction. And there are many there be uh, which go in thereat. Yes, it's packed out. Why is it packed out? Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Everybody loves a religion that they can control. Everybody loves a brand of Christianity that they can control. It doesn't, it doesn't shape them, they shape it. But let me tell you, when you come to Jesus and you get in the straight gate, the straight gate will have you taken off. The straight gate will have you put on. The straight gate will change the way you walk and will change the way you talk. And, and sometimes the straight gate will make you uncomfortable with yourself. My God, it leadeth to destruction. But the one good thing about this straight gate is that it leads to life. And I heard him say, few there be that find it. The two gates lead to two ways. Uh, the gate that is wide leads uh, to the way that is broad. And the gate that is narrow, uh, uh, which is small, leads to the way that is narrow. The narrow way is a way, is the way of the godly. <laughs> the broad way is the way of the ungodly. And those who are the only, and those are the only two ways in which men can travel. The godly person delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate both day and night. And I heard him say, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, there's a blessing in serving God in the narrow way oh lord the narrow way loves jesus 
Some folk have just lost their drive. They've lost their oomph. They've lost their power. They have no desire to do any better because they own that broad way. But when you own the narrow way, you got to keep praying. Got to get in your word. I told them today in the 8 o'clock class, you won't find a scripture in the Bible that tells us to read the Bible because we're not told to read the Bible. We're told to study the Bible. We're told to search the scriptures. Anybody can read a passage, but it takes time to get in there and study the word. It takes time to search out God's truth. One of the worst things you can do is get hooked up in a daily devotion where every day somebody else gives you a pre-described scripture and that's your scripture for the day. You won't learn the Bible that way, but you got to turn that television off. You got to turn off your favorite shows. You got to stop being so social. You got to put the telephone down and get in the word and, and read and study and seek God. Then the Lord will begin to open his word to you. That's called living on the straight and narrow. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I want the straight gate. Hallelujah. The broad way is that broad. The other way is the broad way. It's easy. It's attractive. It's inclusive. It's indulgent. It's permissive. It's self-orientated. Yes, it is. It's the way of the world. There are few rules on that way. Few restrictions. You don't have to come out of anything. Few requirements. You can be anything you want to be and be on the broad way. You don't have to come out of any sin to be on the broad way. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to profess Jesus. Hallelujah. Or just say I'm religious and everything goes. I told you before, sin is tolerated. Truth is moderated. Humility is ignored on the broad way. Hallelujah. And many go in that way. It's a broad way. The broad way don't like church that lasts any longer than an hour. The broad way don't require that you get sanctified. The broad way don't require that men act like men and women like women. The broad way don't require that you pay your tithe. Wow! Oh, the broad way doesn't require that you obey the vows of your marriage. The broad way, hallelujah, don't require for you to believe that abortion is wrong. The broad way will let you go along with same-sex marriage. The broad way let you go along with all these worldly things that's coming down to pike. But the problem with the Broadway is that it may be fun, it may be easy, it may be attractive, but you're on your way to hell. Lord, give me strength to stay on the straight and narrow way because I want to see Jesus in peace. I want to be saved when the Lord comes. So sometimes on this way, I get a little discouraged. Sometimes on this way, you get a little depressed. Sometimes 
on this way. The road gets rough and the going gets tough. But I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay on the straight and narrow. I'm going to stay out here till I die. Because one of these days, the Lord, I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Lord, I thank you for the straight and narrow way. Sometimes on the straight and narrow way, sometimes you have to cry. Sometimes your feelings get hurt. Sometimes you have to stand alone. Sometimes people treat you funny. But I heard the Lord say, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. You ought to throw up your hands and cry loud and say, Thank God I got Jesus on my side. The Lord is with me. Through the twists, through the turns, through the ups, through the downs, I'm going to stay in the confines of the Word of God. I'm going to stay in the straight and narrow way through storms, through death, through sickness. I'm going to serve Him. Can I get a witness? I'm going to serve Him. No matter what, let me hear you. Praise the Lord if you believe. Ah, Lord. Woo! Just look at that person next to you. You got to shake their hand and just tell them, if I got to walk alone, I'm going. Away. Hey! Ah, Somebody shall stay safe. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes level to the ground. But I Yeah, yeah, Lord, good God Almighty. Sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes it gets hard, but I thank God that he's a keeper. Yes, he is, yes, he is, and the standard is high. Hallelujah. Y'all fix me, I'm echoing, I, I, I'm hearing something. I, 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 can y'all hear me? I need you to be able to hear me. Oh, don't let nobody turn you around. I know they got churches out now where the church don't even look like a church. Where you can dress any kind of way you wanna. You don't even have to dress at all. I know they've taken their crosses out. I know they've darkened the buildings, put in ballrooms, anything go. Got sissies leading devotional services, punks playing the organ. I know they got churches where there are no standards, but oh, you ought to thank God for keeping you on the straight and narrow. Yes, college students, you're going to see it all on the college campus. You're going to see all kinds of stuff. You're going to see folk doing things in the name of the Lord that you thought that when you were saved that you could not do. I want to tell you that your thinking was right. Don't let them influence you. 
don't let them pull you from your walk with the Lord. What if some go back in my life? I've seen many go back. I've seen friends backslide. I've seen people give up on God. I've seen them leave holiness and go join these wide, broad churches. But I thank God that he's been my keeper down through the years. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to hold to his hand. Yeah, I hold to God's unchanging hand. And I'm going to build my hopes on things eternal. Yeah, somebody praise him if you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. What gate have you entered? An Indian, who cho- a West Indian, who chose Islam over Christianity, he gave the reasons why he chose Islam over Christianity. He said this, he said, Islam, is a noble religion. Islam. He said, broad path. There is room, he said, in Islam for a man and his sins to be on that path. He says, but the way of Christ is too narrow. So he chose Islam, opposed to Christianity, because what he had to give up to become a Christian, he didn't have to give it up to become a a Muslim. See, this thing is a highway. And it still requires that we conform to it and not the other way around. The Bible says, go on with your liberal self, but the Bible says that you may prove to yourself what is that good, perfect, acceptable will of God. That is, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. See. That, that you may put to the test. That you may be convinced yourself. That you may experience what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I know what sin is like. I know the way of the world. I know what that's like. I know what a lifestyle of not reading the Bible is like. I've already proved that. It ain't good, it ain't acceptable. I know what the way of the wicked is like. Mm -mm. What Christ offers, once you get saved, he says, now I want you to become a student of the kingdom. That is going to change you. That's going to require something of you. That is going to make you have to come face to face, even with your own pet sins. Providing you choose to enter the straight gate. Now, you don't have to hear any of this. Mm -mm, You don't have to. Go the other way. Go to the wide one. And uh, he tells them, Enjoy it. Because where it's leading is to destruction. And the destruction is not just destruction here on earth. It's eternal destruction. I want to know, is it worth that to you? Is it worth that gamble? 
If it is, take the, take the chance. Is it worth it to you? To weigh, to wager your eternal future. That's what stands before you. Two roads. God knows when he separates us. I, I, I got to end up on the sheep's eye. Man, you, you end up over there with the goats, you might well start crying. Oh, Lord, you might well start crying because you know what that means. That means you're done. I'm going for the sheep, sheep, sheep side. I want to pray for that believer who says, Lord, some have entered the straight gate. Some have been pondering the gate. Some the devil have been talking to you. I'm talking to believers first. The devil has been trying to make the other gate the other way more attractive. You know, come on over here. Our service don't last long. You don't even have to dress up. Matter of fact, we'll give you coffee and donuts at the door. The preacher, while he's preaching, he's mainly an entertainer. We laugh the whole sermon away. We just have fun over here. That's the wide gate. And Jesus admits it's, a, it's, it's attractive because it appeals to the flesh. They ain't going to call for no real prayer on that wide gate. They ain't going to call for any real sacrifice. But Jesus says, I'm going to tell you, if you enter in this one, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. When you come in here, when you come in this gate, on this road, this ain't no religion that you shape. This shapes you. I told a man the other day, I said, I witnessed it to him. I said, your problem is you're trying to come up with your own style of religion, your own brand that is not allowed. You can't make up your own religion. You can't serve God through the figment of your imagination. That's called being deceived. If you want to get on or stay on the straight and narrow, Regardless to where you are, up or down, in or out, challenges, good or bad, it's straight, not straight. Now, preacher, I want to stay on the straight and narrow. Meet me at the altar. I want to pray for you. Meet me at the altar. Hallelujah. Meet me at the altar. See, this straight and narrow will get you back in church. The straight and narrow will put you before the Lord. The straight and narrow, praise the Lord, challenges that which challenge you. Sometimes on the straight and narrow, you have to walk it by yourself. But it's worth it. Stay on it. Stay on it. Praise the Lord. Stay on it. young man, the young woman to follow Jesus he requires that you come in all the way all the way you don't you don't have to you know I notice everybody's tough till the consequences roll around everybody's bad and that's when the tears begin to flow a grown man, nine feet tall, begin to call for his mama then when the consequences roll around. Life has a way. I want to serve the Lord on the straight and on the narrow. Lift your hands to him. <sighs> Glory. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to his name. Father, we, we, we come before you right now. We come before you right now. We come before you right now. We come before you on this Sunday morning. Glory to God. We're in different places. 
We're facing different foes. But we want to stay or get on the straight and narrow. Some of us, we've admired the gate long enough. Now we're going to enter into it and just do what the Lord says to. God, I've been fighting you. I've been pushing back against you long enough. Now I'm just going to do. This is what I'm going to do, Lord. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with everything that I have in me. Some are already on this gate, on this road, and the enemy have tried to convince you. Have tried to convince you that you're missing out. That is too hard. And that you're being denied certain things. Well, the truth is, you are missing out and being denied certain things. But you're gaining so much more. Hallelujah. Kishek I I want to finish praying for you, but let me tell you something. Brother Rocky told me, he says, Bishop, I said, Rocky, what did you miss out on learning to play like that? He said, the years, he said, I was athletic also, but because I gave myself to the musicians, my brothers were much more athletic than me. I wasn't able to be as good as they were at athletics because I was doing this. I don't know how much money his brothers made being athletes, but he sure had made a lot of money doing that. It was, it was worth the sacrifice. I don't know if he has a brother who's ever been a full-time professional athlete, but he's a full-time professional musician. Hallelujah. And been one for years. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep praying. But what, what's my point? Everything worthwhile comes at a cost. I'm not going to try to fool you and make you think that it is it's, 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 it's priceless. No, it comes at a cost. And you have to be willing to pay that cost. Lord, on this road, those who are streaming, Lord, on this road, we're willing to pay. We're willing to adjust. We're willing to obey you on this road. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're praying for these who are on the altar. And those who are streaming, we pray for you right now. Enter the straight gate. Enter this gate that does, does, we admittedly have restrictions on it. The gate that is at times quite constricting. The gate that causes you to have to shift. The gate that makes you uncomfortable at times makes a man battle with himself. This gate. Jesus said, enter it. We decide. We make, we decide right now. We make the decision to enter into the street. We resist the wide and broad gate. The doors are wide and the road is a super highway. So many lanes. So many lanes. Oh, so much traffic on that one. It seems they have so many of those lanes where you can get in and drive fast. 
Lord, there seems to be no speed limit on that road. You can get from point A to point B on that road, and there are very few stoplights and stop signs. And yet, Lord, over here on this restricted road, the light stops us at every block. Traffic gets backed up sometimes. Sometimes it's quite aggravating. But we're on our way somewhere. Hallelujah. We're on our way. We're on our way. And Father, we make a commitment today that we're going to stay on this straight and narrow gate. The straight and narrow road in Jesus name thank God amen would you worship him right now